Hi, it's Kelly here. And in this video, I've got some exciting additional benefits to tell you about Electroculture 2.0, which you might not have heard about yet. And it starts with what the CDC uh, announced yesterday. It was, in, it was on CB, excuse me, NBC at least, on the website, maybe on TV, um, Yahoo News, and probably everywhere. They came out and announced that there, there was going to be probably a triple epidemic this uh, flu season, you know, coming in the, in the late fall, winter, whatever. And so I want to talk to you about that and, and t uh, tell you that with Electroculture 2.0, you don't have to worry about that. Um, see, when they have this idea that the flu and all these things are very complicated, they have to come up with different kinds of, you know, things in the arm, uh, and all that for each particular one. And they're saying they've got the flu, with another one they call RSV, which is a respiratory synestitial um, virus. And don't ask me to spell that because it's not, it doesn't sound like it's spelled. And then, of course, the, you know, the C word everybody knows about. So, uh, but what's, what they don't seem to focus on uh, it, it with viruses is keeping it simple. Just like they, with cancer, they don't, they don't keep things simple. With cancer, when they see an actual cancer cell, they call it highly undifferentiated. That's a seven-syllable word, and I think they must charge by the syllable. Um, highly undifferentiated means the same. All cancer cells, the true cancer cell, are the same regardless of what other tissue they have involved with it, and that's where they give it the names, because if the other tissue is involved in it, that's how they identify it. But the actual cancer cells are all the same. And with viruses, they're looking for this, that, and the other, and the antibodies, and the antigens, and the this, and the that, and whatever. I have no clue what they're talking about. And, and you might not either. And it really doesn't matter, because there's one thing, one important essential Achilles heel to all viruses. And that is that all viruses that have ever been created since the beginning of time, all have negative needles, negatively charged needles. And they're inactive, and we have 380 trillion of them in our body, so it's a good thing that they're inactive. So what activates them? It's the cell membrane. If it's sick, if it doesn't have enough of a negative charge, then the virus gets in. But generally, that doesn't happen, does it? Because you don't have the flu. With 380 trillion, we can be sick every, every fraction of a second. If, if our membranes weren't doing the job. So when the, when the membranes have the negative charge or negative net charge, it repels the viruses every single time, 100% of the time, just like with the light switches, either on or off. It can't get in, it's repelled. Negative, negative, it, they bounce off each other. So that's the key. How do we get the, how do we get the cell membrane to work better? Well, by spinning the copper with the heart front energizers or on, on ceiling fans or on uh, the, your solar powered uh, hangers outside, those kinds of things generate the kind of energy to boost your immune system of the cell membrane. The, the immune system that we think of is actually a secondary immune system because we need viruses. Viruses, uh, they, they get rid of the dead cells. If we, we have cells dying all the time, and if we didn't get rid of them, they would stack up and, and, and accumulate and accumulate more and more and more, and then we'd start to smell bad. So the viruses are our friends. They go in there, they get rid of the dead cells, and the, the immune system, secondary immune system, can take care of that relatively small number compared to all the cells in the body. So it's really great to have viruses in our body. So with the, with the uh, energizer, the heart felt energizer, what have you, we protect ourselves. Now, this sounds theoretically good, but you probably want some evidence. And we can look right at the CDC and see evidence of it. Because if we look at, for example, RSV from last year, uh, during the height of the season, we were up to about 21,000, 20, 21,000 a week. And uh, I'll put links down at the bottom on YouTube 
uh, in the description area so that you can click on it and see for yourself. And the last, if you scroll all the way down, it'll show, I think it's week 28, what we have right now. All right, so it was 20,000 in early November, and uh, that's when I put a video out in, in mid-November asking people around the 20th to, who were already into this sort of thing to start spinning stuff. And we had a bad flu season, a bad RSV season, and from that point on, they went down. And so, by, by comparison, right now, I'm going to give you a drum roll. Dun -dun 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 -dun. However, but first I must tell you that two years ago in July, in each week in July, it was about 4,000 cases of RSV. Last year, it was about 1,500 cases because at that point, these, these energizers, they were slowly getting into a few places, you know, a few people had set them up. But, and, then in, and then come around Thanksgiving or, or December, boom. So this past week, there have been 55 cases compared to 1,500 last year a week and 4,000 a week two, uh, two Julys ago and 21,000 last November. So they're almost gone just based on what we've done so far. All right? Now, the measles are the same way. In the U.S., uh, 2019 and before, for five years, the average was 4,000 cases of the measles a year in the U.S. And they have to be reported. Doctors are required by law to report every measles case they come across. 4,000 cases. This year, in the first six months, which includes the time when the flu, or when the measles are the heaviest, which is winter and early spring. In six months, 50 states plus Puerto Rico, there have been all of 18 cases. Now, the CDC says that, that the measles are the most contagious of all the viruses. Between 12 and 18 people, each time someone gets it, 12 and 18 people can get it. And that's why they have these outbreaks. Well, there haven't been any outbreaks this year. None. They spread out over 12 states, 18 cases over six months, all right? So there's, there's been no outbreaks because we've got enough of them going that we've lowered it. Of course, there's always new 5G being added, uh, you know, more Wi-Fi being added to people's homes and, and businesses every day. All that stuff, you know, the smart meters, or I call them smart beaters, all that stuff. So we want to keep adding to what we're doing in order to protect ourselves from every kind of virus and protect ourselves from every kind of fear-mongering that the CDC or NIH or, or, or your favorite news station that's owned by BlackRock. Um, I got to tell you, I saw, saw a video of Larry Fink. He's the head of BlackRock. BlackRock owns stock in like almost all the 500, the, the Fortune 500 companies. In between them and Vanguard and State Street, they pretty much control what they do. And he's on. He's recorded saying that he forces companies to do this, that, and the other. And he's sitting there, sitting with his hand, holding his hand over like this. He's physically twisted. What does that tell you? I've never seen anybody sit like that. Right? These are the same people who have been been trying to say all kinds of bad things about the movie that, uh, that came out recently. You know what I'm talking about. At least I hope you do. Uh, so those folks are pushing it on the television, but if you watch the numbers, you'll see there will be, there will be almost no flu. There'll be almost no RSV. The only thing there might be is COVID because COVID uh, cases are based on fraudulent testing. The test is not designed to find a virus, a viral infection. All of us have COVID in us, so when they swab a certain percentage of the time, they're going to find it if they're looking for it. But that doesn't mean it's active like we were talking about before. So uh, the test is invalid. So the, the more people get tested, the more it will apparently show up, but that doesn't mean they have it. And it was just reported recently that 
they were actually hospitalizing people who tested positive, who showed up at the hospital because maybe they were having some trouble breathing or they, whatever it was, they went in and, and they, as a matter of course, the hospital was testing everybody that was coming in the emergency room to see if they had tested positive for COVID and they, and some of them did, so they hospitalized them. Some of them didn't come out. Some of them died because then they were given remdesivir and, and, and then the remdesivir and, and necessitated putting them on oxygen. And 80% of the people get put on oxygen like that die. So um, anyway, those are the bonuses that you get by setting up electric culture 2.0. We are actually going to make this world not only abundant with the food and beauty of the flowers and everything, and uh, we are also going to help people feel better, be more energized, and be and not be fearful. And when you're not fearful, and you hear somebody telling you something that doesn't match your experience, you don't necessarily respond to it in the way that they want you to. Fear is a bad place to make decisions from. So by doing Electroculture 2.0, we're going to see a, we could see a transformation in this world like we have never seen before. Um, I hope you like this video. If you do, uh, click the like button, subscribe because then you can watch my other you can check out my other videos. Uh, by the way, I've got information in this book here. Is there a question that heals instantly? More information about the type of energy that we're talking about here that's used with organite and tensor coils and the heartfelt energizers and what have you. Um, well, thank you for listening. You take care and God bless.